Hi everyone. Thank you all for being here to celebrate the final certification of the closure of the Fresh Kills, Land Fresh Kills Landfill. Yay. We will begin today with remarks by Basil Segos, who is um, the Commissioner of the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation. Well, thank you, Commissioner. Um, and welcome, everybody. What a beautiful place. Uh, something you may not have said 20 or 30 years ago, right? But uh, truly today, you get a sense of the scale of this project and how much work has gone into it. I want to give a huge round of applause to Department of Sanitation, Parks, DEC, and everybody here that's been involved in this. Congratulations. Um, yes, it's a great day for, for Staten Island, Staten Islanders. Uh, it's a great day for all of New York City, frankly, and uh, in all of New York State. Uh, when you have a, a chance to turn the corner on something like what was the world's largest landfill to now what is a real vision emerging as the largest park added to New York City in more than a century. I mean, that is, is an incredible story of transformation. So much work went into it, to say the least. Uh, not just closing this facility, Right? You can't just say no to receiving waste, as they did wisely uh, more than 20 years ago. Uh, but the amount of work that had to go into turning the corner and creating an amenity for the city, as they're doing now. Um, DEC has been a strong partner with sanitation for all of those years uh, in ensuring the, the, the closure was done right. But through the installation of liners, catchment basins, regrading the whole property, making sure water runs off the right way and that leachate is being controlled, capturing all those emissions, right? And then creating, helping to create a new landscape here. So I'm very proud of not just playing the role of the regulator in this, but really a partner in helping to restore this incredible landscape. And I think you can see that the restoration is already underway, right? Uh, you almost don't know that you're standing on top of a massive landfill when you're here. You see the beautiful grasses, the views, uh, the 200 species of wildlife that have already returned to this space. It is a remarkable, remarkable recovery already. And I think if there's one thing that we learn um, about environmental work today is that you can give the nature, just give the nature a chance and it will come back. It really will. And that is really a hallmark of all of the work that we as government officials have been doing now in our jobs, whether it's DEC or DEP, DOS, um, is restoring the, 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 the functions of, of nature and restoring the functions of this planet and making uh, not just our city but our state into these national leaders. Uh, we're leading on, on, on climate change. Right? We are the most aggressive state in the country on climate change. New York City, one of the most aggressive cities in the, in the country, in the world, on climate change. Uh, water infrastructure, uh, bringing uh, nature back to our, to our uh, decimated places, working and focusing on, on disadvantaged communities, environmental justice communities that had suffered for so long. These are now priorities of, of Governor Hochul's administration. I know it's a priority of the mayors as well. Uh, that we are, we are looking to turn the corner and, and remediate the, the sins of the past. And that's really what, what Fresh Kills is, in my mind, in a, in a nutshell. My memories of driving by Fresh Kills as a kid, obviously, we all hold our nose, right, at, at driving by Fresh Kills. And if you were living here, you knew it. You knew this place. Now, you look down the hill to the houses, just down, just down over there to the south. And this is an amenity for them. This is something that they will never forget. This moment, they will never forget. We hit our mark. Uh, DEC was proud to issue this final certificate of completion this month to acknowledge decades and decades of hard work. Uh, and we're so proud of our partners at the Department of Sanitation. Uh, Commissioner, I know you're only a month into the job, but great job. You did it. Uh, congratulations, Commish. Uh, and, and now, Parks, Parks Commissioner, you have a blank slate uh, to do an amazing uh, amount of open space, green space, and, and nature recovery on this, on this formerly impacted property. We can do better. We can do better on waste. We've learned that here in New York. We are learning that here in New York. We need to minimize waste. We need to know that we are still producing too much waste as a society so we can celebrate the closure of places like this uh, and also recognize that, that our waste is going somewhere still. 
and we need to recognize that we need to we need to make those reductions in our in our ways so that other communities aren't aren't dealing with the same issues that that we have here in New York City. Uh, but I'm confident that with the mayor's leadership, certainly with the Department of Sanitation, the amazing programs they have on reduction and recycling, um, and the work that we're doing statewide on on uh, addressing some of those core challenges, we'll do this together. But today is congratulations to Staten Island, it's congratulations to New York City, Mayor Adams, and all the f fantastic leaders that are here uh, today behind me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Commissioner. Now we are going to bring up Commissioner Sue Donahue of the New York City Parks Department. It is my honor and pleasure to hand over this place to Sue and all of the other parkies. Thank you so much, Commissioner Tisch. I'm so thrilled, and it's really just an honor to be here today to mark the official closure of the Fresh Kills landfill. And I want to really take this opportunity to mark the significant progress on its journey to becoming a park. I first want to thank the Department of Sanitation and Commissioner Tisch, the Department of Environmental Conservation, Commissioner Sagos, our elected officials here today, and everyone who made this moment possible. Fresh Kills is a historic site in so many ways. It's a Moses era project, New York City's last and biggest landfill, and part of our ground zero recovery efforts. And now it's the largest landfill to park project in the world. That is awesome. Standing here today, and as the commissioner said, we're all reminded of the impact of our waste and of the environmental burden that Staten Islanders dealt with in accepting residential garbage from all five boroughs. I'm also amazed by sanitation's state-of-the-art engineering, especially the capped landfill mounds, which have created a unique new landscape that we all can see and that we're all going to be able to enjoy. Their important work has led to the resurgence of wildlife. As the commissioner noted, over 200 species of birds now reside here on site. It's clear that this place has become and will increasingly be an environmental resource for communities all over Staten Island and beyond. It's exciting for me personally and for all of us to envision this as a new park, as a new parks resource, and envision its future as a 2,200 acre park. Just to put this in context for all of you, Central Park is a mere 843 acres. Prospect Park is 526 acres. This will be the second largest park in our park system, just behind Pelham Bay Park, which sits at 2,700 acres. So it is so good, exactly. It is amazing. Especially given what we've all just been going through with the pandemic, we see the increased importance of parks and open space. So to be able to add this kind of acreage here in Staten Island is so important for so many, not only Staten Islanders, but for people across all of the five boroughs. So we're so excited here as a Parks Department to be here today to celebrate this historic event. And in partnership with sanitation and with DEC, we've been building the park in phases. We started with the park edges so that people in the surrounding co communities could have access as soon as possible. Phase one of North Park is in construction and expected to open in the coming months. This milestone project is the first within the boundary of the former landfill. Its opening will mark the first time that New Yorkers will have daily access to this amazing site with stunning views of the surrounding landscape. Parks and Fresh Kills Park Alliance also continue to work with sanitation to provide access to closed sections of the site, making it a hub for art and environmental research and a resource for free programming like kayaking and photography tours and more. DEC's final certification represents a new chapter in the history of Fresh Kills Park, from a municipal landfill to a symbol of hope and renewal, which we all so need. 
So I want to thank you all. I want to thank the Commissioner of Sanitation. Thank you to the DEC Commissioner, our elected officials without whom all this would not work, and all of our partners. Thank you so much for being here. It's such an exciting day. Thank you, Sue. Your energy and excitement about this is infectious and contagious, and it's uh, my pleasure to be here with you and the other elected officials to celebrate the closure of the Fresh Kills landfill. Um, as my colleagues have made clear, today we are closing a major chapter, certainly in Staten Island history, but also in the history of the city of New York. The closure of the Fresh Kills landfill, now formally certified by DEC, began 36 years ago. During that time, it would have been easy to give up, to walk away from this important work. But DSNY, Parks, DEC, and the rest of our partners in government kept moving forward over four decades on behalf of the people of this borough. I especially want to thank the DSNY staff, many of whom are here today, who have devoted their entire careers to this place and to getting this important work done. 36 years and $980 million later, here we are celebrating a major milestone for environmental justice. But the work is not yet complete. Someday, this closed landfill will be a park for all to enjoy. I am a good government person. I consider myself a good government person. And in a way, for me, this represents the most pure and beautiful kind of government project. One began by people who knew that they might not live to see it complete or might not be working on it when it was complete but knew that one day the kids of New York City would run around under the trees that they planted. I am honored to be a very small part of this right here as it literally comes over the finish line and really to represent the work of so many of the women and men of the Department of Sanitation over the past 36 years. Um, I would now like to turn it over to District Attorney Mike McMahon, who I have to say has been involved and engaged on these issues over decades. Um, he was the sponsor of our last solid waste management plan. So looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Tish, and good morning, everyone. As you heard, I'm Michael McMahon, the District Attorney, and I'm very happy to stand here with our Borough President and City Councilman, uh, David Carr. And I know that in the crowd there are representatives of Senator Lanza's office, uh, uh, Senator McCusick's office, Councilmember Borelli's office, and I. anybody else I miss. But I want to say that because um, this day and this place symbolizes so much about Staten Island and what's integral to the success that we celebrate today is the bipartisan way that we come together Democrat and Republican whatever else uh, when the island is faced with an incredible challenge to make a significant uh, impact for our community so that's really important I want to say that first and foremost um, but also this place this site these more than uh, close to 3,000 acres also symbolizes so much about Staten Island. Because let's face it, for 50 years, we were literally dumped on by the rest of the city of New York. At one point, more than 28,000 tons a day of residential trash were brought to this landfill and literally dumped in a heap without any environmentally sensitive treatment um, and that's where we were at that moment in time, in the late 80s and the early 90s. It was a disaster. People have died from cancer. That has been documented. Communities ravaged by the smell and the pollution that existed here. But Staten Island did not give up, and we were resilient. And the borough president and the prior borough presidents with their leadership for calling for the end of this disaster. And then a team of us went to the city council in the year 2002, 20 years ago, 
at a time when, although the landfill had been shut down temporarily, there was a call to reopen it because of financial uh, pressures uh, after 9-11. Uh, and in fact, the IBO did a report showing that the city would save billions of dollars over time by reopening the landfill. And so we set about, as the commissioner said, to create a 20-year solid waste management plan that comprehensively came up with ways to environmentally containerize uh, uh, and do it in a fair way that did away with environmental uh, injustice. And it wasn't just here on Staten Island. There were communities throughout the city of New York that now had residential transfer stations in their neighborhoods, and they were dealing with that. Uh, and it was really, uh, uh, it, it was racially and environmentally unjust. And we set about coming up with a plan that containerizes the trash and is built on the, th on the, on the equitable notion of borough self-sufficiency. How novel, right? That every borough should be responsible for transporting and disposing of its own trash in a way that one borough, one neighborhood, doesn't bear the burden of that. And that's what we set out about out to do, and that's really a great Staten Island story because we talk about that resilience. It's the same resilience that we saw right over there on that field after 9-11. When, the, re, when the, the debris and remains from the World Trade Center were brought here, everything was shut down, and Staten Islanders came together to go through that material to try to give comfort and relief to those who lost loved ones. I lost a best friend in 9-11, Jack Connolly. He was never found. His spirit, his remains are on this hill. His dust, if you will, is on that hill. And that's the story of Staten Island. This, we were resilient after 9-11. We were resilient after 50 years of injustice, and it's a great, great story, one I'm very proud of to have been part of and very proud of to be celebrating here with you today and honored to be part of this celebration. So I thank my colleagues in government across the aisle. I thank you, Commissioner Tisch, and the commissioners who came before you. Commissioner Dunio, I thank you, your whole team. Commissioner Sagos, it was with DEC's uh, partnership and actually rules that we had to follow to get that plan done. Thank goodness the city was only about 20 years late in following the rules. Oh, well, but we suffered from that, but we recovered. And so to all my colleagues in government, here and not here today, and to echo the words of Commissioner Tisch, look what happens when we get it right, when we work at it. We worked four years, hearings and, 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 and meetings and, 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 and tours of neighborhoods and figuring out ways to containerize and build marine transfer stations and rail stations and bring in a multimodal approach to this and then to reduce to recycling and electronic pickups and all the other things we put in the plan. But the point is we work together, we solve the problem in a way that then we also uh, did a bill to transfer this land from uh, the Department of Sanitation to the Parks Department. Congratulations, Commissioner. It's a nice <laughs> gift. Uh, but I, and I know that Commissioner Richard Doan and everyone on, on, in your department here will do such a good job. And look, I know, obviously, I could go on and talk about this all day long. I know you don't want that, right, Vito? Do they? No, no. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I just want everyone to feel the enthusiasm that Staten Islanders feel uh, for the for what we went through, uh, but however, what we're going to enjoy in this incredible site and the incredible work that will go forward. So especially to the men and women of the Department of Sanitation, to the men and women of the Parks Department, the men and women of DEC, thank you for this great legacy that you will continue to build for the people of Staten Island, and thank you for allowing me to come and enjoy this day with you all. God bless you. Thank you, D.A. McMahon. We definitely feel your enthusiasm. Um, now we're going to ask Borough President Vito Pacella to come up and give some remarks. Um, like the D.A., the Borough President has also been working specifically on issues around the closure of fresh kills for decades, so it is my pleasure to welcome him to the podium. Thank you, uh, Commissioner. And, and you know, Sometimes in life we say things are always important, or things are always important. That means really nothing is important. This is important. This is important not just for Staten Island, has been said, New York City, New York State, but the country, because today is about proving that the impossible is indeed possible. Um, I want to thank not only you, Commissioner, but it's been thanked before, the Commissioner of DEC, uh, our great Parks Commissioner, and like uh, Michael said before, our colleagues, because we came together, Mike McMahon, David Carr, and so many other people. 
Uh, I can recall as if it was yesterday. You know, we got Skip Master and Ed Burke back there uh, from Guy Molinari days and Jim Molinaro sitting in the office to try to contemplate how we're going to sue <laughs> the city of New York and the state of New York to close this. And Sherry Diamond, who now is working with Congresswoman Mallory Takas, was with me in the city council when we introduced legislation in February of 1996 to say enough is enough to reflect the mood of almost a half a million people on Staten Island to say we're not going to have seagulls flying in our neighborhoods and smell that stench every single day. And the response from the city at that time was, too bad. Suck it up. You know, there was a time when there were over 100 landfills in the city, and one by one they closed until Fresh Kills was, as Mike McMahon said, the city's sole dumping ground. And all we heard from the city of New York and state leaders was, suck it up. And the, the little, little engine that could, the people of Staten Island said, no, we're not going to suck it up. We're not going to stand by and let you dump on us on a regular basis. So we sat down together, Democrats, Republicans at all levels across Staten Island, and we fought. And in February of 1996, when we introduced the legislation, to just about now, about Memorial Day, by Memorial Day in 1996, we had a commitment from the mayor and the governor to close the landfill once and for all. So the people who were, are not here, who deserve a lot of credit, people like Guy Molinari, people like Jim Molinaro, people like Rudy Giuliani, George Pataki, John Markey, Eric Vitaliano, Jay O'Donovan, John Fusco, I'm saying this because they deserve the credit too. Michael Bloomberg, like McMahon said, there were those who looked at opportunity any which way they could reopen this landfill. And fortunately, we had people like Mike McMahon in office at the time who said, no way, we're not going to do it. So today's about truly saying that the impossible is possible. And today is the gift that Staten Islanders deserved years ago. Better late than never. I remember when we introduced the bill, a young, a, a young man, a, a, an old timer came to me and gave me a little card and he said, hey, here's something you might be interested in. It was something from the 1940s that said the city of New York is contemplating dumping garbage in a place called Fresh Kills, but only on a temporary basis. And he held the card, he says, I thought you might be interested in this. And I bring this up to say sometimes you got to push back at things that say, you know, with authority to say things are temporary and this is the way you got to do. So one of the blessings of public service is to stand here together and to say we came together to do the right thing for the people of our community. And to the men and women in sanitation who made it their mission to close this, we say thank you. To the men and women in the Parks Department who are going to now take this over, we know we're the borough of parks and we have wonderful people who work in the Parks Department. We thank you for what you do every day. And we know it's in good hands now. And DEC to making sure it was done right. And the next generation of leaders like David Carr and the people who will come in a way, we're saying we're giving this to you so the people of Staten Island in this country can appreciate this gift right here. Thank you. Thank you, Borough President. Um, I am now going to ask Council Member David Carr to come and make some remarks. Thank you so much, uh, Commissioner. I'm so proud to be here today. I, you know, I grew up in this borough in the, in the early 90s, and I remember watching with my family and friends and neighbors this fight unfold and how passionately invested we were as a community in it. And it was really emblematic for me and I think my generation of Staten Islanders to see that Staten Island could find its voice and that voice could be respected and heard as it always should have been. And, you know, we're standing on this ground here today and I'm reminded that, you know, the successes of the future are built on the accomplishments of the past. We stand on the shoulders of giants. Bar President Fasella mentioned a number of them, like Guy Molinari, Jim Molinaro, and then he is a young council member and later congressman fighting this fight. I think D.A. McMahon was on the staff of Assemblyman Vitaliano at that time fighting for the same efforts in Albany. And we're here today because of their work. We're here today because the succeeding generation of elected officials, when 
when Mike McMahon entered the council, Jimmy Otto entered the council, they fought to keep the dump closed. They fought to turn it into the park that it's blooming into. They fought for borough equity and our solid waste management plan so that no borough would ever again become the dumping ground for another, uh, an issue that you know, we're going to be talking about intensely as we update that plan in the next several years. And so I'm here today to say thank you to them and for their efforts. Thank you as a Staten Islander. But as the new council member for the Mid-Island and the bar president mentioned this in his remarks, it's now incumbent upon me and those of my colleagues who are in government to take the baton forward and to continue to build on those successes of the past. Just to the northeast of us, we have uh, North Park, which is opening earlier this, later this year, excuse me, as Commissioner Donahue said, that's in my part of the, the, the district for the, for the former landfill site. We have so much more to do here on this side of, uh, of the Fresh Kills, and, and I'm so looking forward to being a part of that, helping imagine the future of the Fresh Kills Park, and also to work with, our, with the new administration on a solid waste management plan that includes borough equity at its heart, as it has for the last 20 plus years. So, so so great to be here. I really encourage Staten Islanders to look at the uh, the open days that are going to be coming later this year and to engage in the future of what this park could be. Thank you so much.